Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about using Shape Flex for stretchy fabrics, a quilt that I finished this past week. Um, grid fabrics designed by Katerina Rochella, Pinterest boards, the book review will be for the Fussy Cutters Club. I'll be demonstrating how to quilt fabric for a bag and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. We had a, a, quite a bit of snow in Chicago this evening, so we were outside shoveling a few times. I see Sheila's watching from Texas, Cheryl from Milwaukee, and Sonia from Brooklyn. So thank you everyone so much. And I got an email right before the show started from Kim Mickle. Um, Kim wanted to thank everyone in the Facebook group, the So Sweetness Facebook group, for um, their prayers for her daughter this past week. Her daughter had invasive surgery, so I think Kim said herself and her daughter would be watching the show. So, hey Kim, and I hope uh, for continued um, progress uh, with your daughter's health. Um, and I started working on the very first book club project yesterday, so I made sort of like little prototypes. If it's uh, more of a, not a complex design, but if it's not just straightforward squares or rectangles for a new bag design, I tend to use uh, foam interfacing while I'm working on my pattern pieces just so that I can get an idea of how the bag will actually look like um, in its uh, finished form without having to go through all the steps of sewing the entire bag. Um, so I did that uh, with my foam interfacing yesterday, made a few different little prototypes. Um, I was going to show you a sneak peek, but I decided it would be more fun to wait until the very first book club uh, uh, discussion on the show. So that'll be March 12th. Stay tuned for that. I know a lot of you have already read the first book for book club already. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that first book on the show and to show off the first book club project. It'll be a free PDF pattern and a free video. So super excited about that. All right. So before we get started tonight, just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information that way. So uh, for my favorite portion of the show, the notion of the week, I decided to slightly change it up a little bit this week. Uh, I guess it's still technically a notion or supply used for bag making, but I've got a lot of email questions lately about using uh, stretchy or garment fabrics to make a bag, and so I thought I'd actually show it on the show. So recently I showed a couple backpacks that I made for myself and my daughter, and I actually made these using knit fabric. So the print fabric is a knit, and the blue is uh, quilting cotton. So I wanted to show you how I actually used a stretchy fabric to make a bag. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you how, to, how I did it. It's really fast and easy. Okay, so I, I've got a knit fabric right here. As you can see, super stretchy. And as you can tell, a stretchy fabric would, will be really problematic for sewing together into a bag if it still has the stretch because then it'll get warped and pulled every which way while you're sewing with it. So um, obviously I've got the fabric right here and I went ahead and there's two different ways you can do this. Um, the first way is that you can interface the entire portion. Obviously you'll be having a bigger piece of knit fabric to make a bag. You can interface either the entire portion with the pawn shape flex or what I did for those backpacks is I cut out all of my pattern pieces first with Pellon Shape Flex, which is a fusible medium weight interfacing. And then I fused each of the pieces individually onto the wrong side of my fabrics. Obviously you want to iron your knit first to make it nice and smooth and take out any wrinkles. Um, but let, let me just show you real quick how I did this. So obviously my pattern piece right here, I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the knit fabric. And I've got my, my iron set to the cotton setting. Um, you'll want to obviously place the shape flex on the area where you'll want to cut out, especially if you're fussy cutting little characters or shapes from your fabric. I'm just going to go ahead and place it uh, right in the middle just for this demonstration. And you can use a bit of steam if you'd like. I usually recommend using a pressing cloth for um, attaching interfacing to your fabric, but 
Um, by now you might know that I don't use press and cloths in my videos just so you can see everything that I'm doing. Okay, so you want to iron that long enough so that the interfacing is firmly adhered to your fabric. And then you can just go ahead with your scissors and cut out around the shape flex. And you want to be careful when you're doing that because since I cut the shape flex to the size of the fabric piece that I'll need for the pattern, um, if I if I adjust it or cut it smaller or larger, it'll affect how the finished bag comes together. And the nice thing about this is if you accidentally place the shape flex in an area of the fabric that you don't want, or if you fused a really big piece of shape flex to the fabric and you don't need to use the entire thing for cutting out your pattern pieces, um, you can just go ahead and easily rip that off. So here's my fabric piece and the stretch um, horizontally or selvage to selvage is taken out. There's still a little bit of stretch left on the bias, which is kind of normal. Quilting cottons will stretch on the bias as well. And if your fabric is super, super stretchy, you can also attach a second piece of the shape flex, but I feel like the one piece is, is quite enough. I also follow the same process if I'm using another garment fabric, such as rayon, um, something that's not stretchy but has a lot of drape or is thinner. So I'll use the shape flex to give it a little bit more body and then you'll follow the instructions in whatever pattern you're working on. Um, for like the, for example, for the exterior of the bag, I might then go ahead and attach this to the foam interfacing, but having that shape flex on there is the first step to being able to use a knit or stretchy fabric for making a bag with. Okay, so I, I hope that solved any questions about using different types of fabric for bag making. Um, those backpacks that I made with the knit fabrics, the Shape Flex uh, does give it a little bit of extra thickness, um, at least a little bit thicker than the quilting cotton, but I still found it relatively easy to work with in using the same interfacings as called for in the pattern. So I finished a quilt last night that I've been working on. I think I started working on it uh, in December, something like that, and I had to keep putting it to the side, but I finally finished it. Um, I've got it folded up right here, so I'm going to hold this folded up portion just so you can get a hint of uh, the design of the quilt. So it's got uh, like sort of braids. I chose uh, grays. Here you can see the grays and the purples on the side. Grays, purples, um, pinks, teal, and white text fabric. Uh, we tried to take a picture earlier today and we found out that the quilt is sort of a two-person quilt for holding up. So. I just had Danny and we, we used a fence to kind of throw it over. So um, Danny's going to put that photograph up on the screen right now of the quilt. Um, so we did the best we could photographing it. We'll try another day when the quilt top is finished. But as you can see, the text fabric is the white fabric toward the bottom. So I was really pleased with the, the color scheme that I chose for this quilt. These are all fabrics from Art Gallery Fabrics. So uh, various text prints and I tried to sit, stay with that same color scheme of you know the pinks teals purples and the grays are sort of at the top there's my head over there uh, it was snowing today so it was kind of challenging uh, getting the quilt in the snow and being able to hold it up to show off enough of the quilt so if you liked that quilt this is the book that the quilt pattern is from uh, the quilt pattern in the book is called cascade and let me flip open and show you um, the book is written by Victoria Finley Wolf, and I actually purchased an acrylic template from Victoria's website. And I have to tell you, this acrylic template made things so much quicker. I was cutting uh, six layers of fabric at a time. I had to cut, uh, I don't know how many of these, maybe 350, something like that. It's been a while since I cut them, but made it so much faster. The quilt was really easy to put together. I was initially a little bit worried about um, lining up the rows for the braids or, or whatever you call the shapes and it was super easy. I, I was really surprised and I'm really pleased with how the quilt came out and it was nice to finish uh, a non-bag project. Uh, it's been a little while since I did that so um, lot, a lot of a really fun project. I definitely make it again. All right so Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show we'd like to invite you now whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube to go ahead and type either bag lady or bag dude in the comments right now. Um, I love glancing over either on the Tuesday show or the Sunday show and seeing all of the Bag Lady and Bag Dude comments come through the feed. I can see both uh, the YouTube and the Facebook comments uh, kind of in small print, but I could still see them on Danny's screen over there right over my shoulder. So thank you so much for being part of the community. 
we're so glad you're here and we really appreciate you so I only added a couple fabrics to my stash this week but I wanted to share them with you I'm trying to keep things in control um, and try it to use up as much as I can while still keeping the purchase purchases to a minimum so I'm gonna jump over to that side camera again and show you those fabrics so these fabrics are designed by Katarina Rochella for Art Gallery Fabrics and the fabric line is called Grid. So this was my absolute favorite print from the line. I love the colors. I love um, the diagonal lines. I love that it's kind of uh, um, distressed. distressed. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> and then here's another fabric from the line. It's a floral and there's some other floral prints and I just tried to pick, like I said, I just tried to pick a couple that I think I would definitely use. So the background is sort of a grayish periwinkle and then there's butterflies in really bright colors and you'll want to check out the rest of the line. I linked to it in the description. Um, it was a really tough choice just to narrow it down to two different fabrics because um, the whole line is beautiful and a lot of these similar colors in the rest of the prints from the line. So again, this fabric line is called Grid and it's designed by Katarina Rochella. All right, so another update that I wanted to let you know about, uh, over the weekend we created some Pinterest boards for certain areas of the Social Sunday show um, that I get questions from a lot. So um, oftentimes what happens is someone watches the show and they recall something vaguely familiar about a particular fabric or book that they were looking for, but they can't remember the exact name of it. And so we created some Pinterest boards to help you out with that. So I linked to um, the main Soul Sweetness Pinterest board in the description. And we also created three new boards. So there's a board for Social Sunday fabrics and we'll be pinning the fabrics that I show on the show every week. Um, so Sweetness, uh, sorry, uh, Social Sunday notions and then also Social Sunday books for the books that I talk about on the show. So three separate boards. Um, I'd love it if you're on Pinterest, if you'd follow either the main So Sweetness board or any of those three Social Sunday boards in case you'd like to keep updated um, with the fabrics, notions, or books. Because over time, I know every Sunday I talk about new fabrics. It's hard to keep track of all of those and you can find them easily on Pinterest. Um, and again, those links are in the description. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, do you use Pinterest? So just let me know, let, yes or no. Uh, I started using Pinterest a few years ago, and if you're not familiar with Pinterest, it's basically a gigantic uh, internet inspiration board. So you can create different boards for different topics. So for instance, I have a board for kitchen, which when I find recipes on the internet, I pin those so that I can go back and find those recipes later. Um, I have tons of different boards. I have a board for Christmas sewing, a board for free quilt patterns, all sorts of different boards. So they all have their own categories, making it a little bit easier to find. And when you're pinning things, basically you're pinning photos. So when you go back to look at your boards, um, you, you see all the photos. And then when you click on the photo, it takes you to the link of where you originally found it. So in the case of the recipes, I can see the yummy recipe photos of something that I'd like to make for dinner. Click on the the photo in Pinterest and it'll take me to the recipe so that I can make it for dinner tonight. And actually that's what I did for last night's dinner. I made this chicken chili and uh, I just, you know, I was wondering what to make for dinner, went to my Pinterest board, um, looked at the photographs of the recipes that I'd saved and then uh, just chose one that looked good and made it for dinner and turned out great. So I love using Pinterest. Um, I've taken a little break from it in the past, but it's always great for reminding myself of cool things that I found on the internet in the past. All right, so uh, speaking of Social Sunday books, it's now time to get over to the, the book review of the week. The book is called Fussy Cutters Club, and I'll jump over to the side camera and show you. All right, so the book is called Fussy Cutters Club, a boot camp for mastering fabric play, and it's written by Angie Wilson of Gnome Angel, and I've actually met Angie in person. It's been a few years, but she's lovely, she's hilarious, and I love this book. Um, I love using large-scale prints for my projects, so I feel like this book is right up my alley, and of course the cover is, in my opinion, the best project in the book and really caught my eye. So uh, fussy cutting is using prints, as you can see on this um, example, using prints and taking a print where you can have um, the full print featured. So as the example of the swan or the bee, you get an idea of the, the fabric or the even the octopus. You get that whole uh, image of the print 
in your fabric cut. So uh, lots of really bright rainbow colors in here. Of course, with any sewing or quilting book, all the basics are in the, the beginning, how to um, bind a quilt, um, all sorts of things. Since this book is focusing on fussy cutting, um, the book starts out by talking about different fabrics, novelty fabrics, florals, geometrics, um, complementary fabrics, which are sort of monochromatic, and then solids. So um, I bookmarked a couple areas in the book. Uh, it talks about how to select fabrics for fussy cutting. I bookmarked this, bookmarked this page right over here because I think it's really important also to take a look at repeats in the, the fabric as well. So in this particular repeat over here, I know it's really small, but there's chipmunks in this tulip pink fabric. And as you can see, the chipmunks happen pretty often the fab in the fabric. In this other example of a fabric, this is a fabric designed by Lizzie House. It's called the Great Hunt. And the unicorn is the main feature in the fabric. But as you can see, the unicorn doesn't pop up very often. So if you're using the, the unicorn for fussy cutting, you might have quite a bit of fabric waste depending on your project. And I've used this print in a couple projects before. And I find that to be the case, which is why I use this print for a large project like a duffel bag. Um, this particular area talks about negative space in a print. So I'm just gonna read this little section right here. This is often where the hunt for the perfect novelty print takes a turn for the worst. For a novelty print to be highlighted effectively, it should stand on its own and not be crowded out by other aspects of the print or your piecing. So for instance, this print right here with the crow, even though the crow is the almost in the center of the print, there's also the crow featured around it. And so that might take away from the main feature since it's sort of crowded with the rest of the design. Um, I also bookmarked another area right here um, just because I thought this was really cool with the fussy cutting of the chocolate cake. And this is kind of the epitome of what fussy cutting is, getting that whole taste of the print in the little piece that you'll be cutting out. So there's 14 projects in the book and I just wanted to flip through also and show you the projects. Uh, because fussy cutting also encap encapsulates English paper piecing, there's also some how-tos in the book on how to do that. And then let me get to the projects. So there's a variety of projects, not all of them are quilty, some are little accessories and bags. So to get you started, here's a pot holder, and obviously here's the template that you'll need for fussy cutting so you can get just that little main image in the middle of your piece. Here's another smaller, quicker project to get you started, and these are little coasters. And as the projects uh, go on, they get bigger and a little bit more complex, but all the beginner projects are in the front. And this is English paper piecing, just to get you to um, try that out if you've not done it before. Here's a, a cute little pouch made with fussy cutting. Again, this is a beginner rated box pouch project. An improv pillow right here. And this was really cute. I love the different colors. I love the rickrack and the trim. And this is just to get you to practice fussy cutting and working as you can see all those different fussy cut prints. And these are all fabrics from different fabric lines, but they really work when you put them together. All right, a mini quilt next and a, a tote bag. There's that mini quilt. A flock of seagulls table runner. And let me get to a bigger, here's a bigger picture of the quilt. I love the rainbow colors in that particular project. Here's a placemat, which is again, a, a great chance for different, I love the rainbow schemes of the placemat. I'd love to have a, a dining room table set out with these. I think that would be really awesome. Here's the tote bag. As you can see, all different little examples of fussy cutting if you take a close look at all the fabrics used. And even this right here with the geometric prints, is, I would consider that fussy cut as well. An I Spy quilt. So this is again a beginner project, but as you can see, all of these elements in the quilt are fussy cut from the car to the little spaceship to the butterfly. And here's my favorite project in the quilt. Uh, we are all connected and it's a mini quilt. Love, love, love. I love the newsprint background. I love everything about this particular project. And this is kind of a project that I, I mentioned recently that I had some questions about after the show. Um, I would consider this an economy block quilt. 
And economy block just means uh, it's a square within a diagonal square within a square. So these are economy blocks, but in a sort of different sizes. And this is an example of how fussy cutting can work at its best. I think that's, oh, one more project in this book. Oh, two more, sorry about that. Um, but as you can see, a great selection of projects. I particularly love the, the cover project and that economy block quilt. And again, this is called Fussy Cutters Club and it's written by Angie Wilson. Okay, so tonight's demonstration will be um, a, an email that I got recently from Tracy. She wanted to know how to quilt fabric to use for a bag. And I've gotten this question in the past. Um, and I certainly when I first started writing patterns, I didn't make notes of this in the patterns, but more recent patterns I, I sure have. <coughs> Excuse me. When you're quilting fabric for a bag, you do want to cut your fabric and your interfacing larger than what your finished pieces will be to account for shrinkage. I'll talk about it in the video, but um, I have a demonstration video to share with you on how I quilted fabric to interfacing. In this demonstration, I used uh, sort of a diamond uh, scheme for the quilting, but you can use any design that you'd like for your machine quilting, um, whether it's stippling or free motion quilting, if you're quilting things like flowers or feathers into your fabric, whatever your design is, um, but I felt like the diamond design was certainly an easy place to get started. So enjoy the demonstration. They need to be cut approximately one inch larger on all edges in preparation for the quilting. So here's one of my main panels that I cut out from exterior fabric and foam interfacing. And as you can see, it's cut approximately one inch larger than the template. And the reason that we need to do that is because when you quilt or a machine quilt, the fabric and the interfacing tends to shrink down. So we wanna cover ourselves for any shrinkage. So that's why we're cutting it about one inch larger, and we'll be cutting down to the proper size after the quilting. Okay, so let's get into the quilting right away. And if you decide to skip the quilting, that's no problem. If that's the case, you'll, you'll cut according to the pattern templates, and I'll tell you how to attach the fabric and the interfacing a little bit later on. But let's start with the quilting. For my pouch, I used um, lines on a 45 degree angle. Um, let me show you what the lines look like. So here's a piece that I already quilted, and as you can see, these are the lines on the 45 degree angle, and I used my sewing machine and a walking foot. You could use your regular foot as well, but I just thought my walking foot gave me a little bit of extra, extra help there. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my ruler. There's a marking on the ruler for a 45 degree angle, and it's marked with the 45. So I'm going to use these two lines over here to start off with my my first lines. I'm using the Clover Chaco. You can use other fabric markers or tools. Just make sure that they are removable after the fabric is quilted. I'm going to space my lines one inch apart. So I've drawn a couple as you can see they're one inch apart and I'm only going to draw lines through approximately the middle. So I like to machine quilt from the middle outward. And the reason that I do that is if you machine quilt from the side or corner in toward the center, once you reach the center you might have a bit of a fabric pucker there, but if you start quilting from the center outward, if there's any extra fabric it'll just be pushed back um, while you're doing your quilting. If your fabric is, um, if your foam interfacing is fusible, you might want to fuse the fabric to the foam before you do the quilting. Mine's a sew-in, and I actually prefer having the sew-in as opposed to the fusible. So I'm just gonna hold my fabric in place. Um, you can use some Wonder Clips as well, whatever you're comfortable with doing. Okay, so I've got my lines drawn through the center. So I'm going to start machine quilting using my walking foot, starting with this line and working my way outward. Okay, so I've got the walking foot on my machine. If you prefer to use your regular sewing machine foot for the machine quilting, that's fine too. 
I've also increased my stitch length to make the stitches look nicer. So my stitch length is set to three and a half millimeters and you can adjust it to your liking if you prefer. And I'm just going to continue sewing through all the lines till I complete this half of the pouch. Okay, so now that this half is quilted, I'm going to draw lines and quilt the other half. So it's going to be the same method as you did with the first half. You'll just draw the lines. So continue drawing the lines to the opposite corner, machine quilt it, and I'll meet you back here and show you how to draw the lines in the opposite direction again at a 45 degree angle. Okay, now we're going to draw the opposing lines and machine quilt it just as before. So I'm going to take my ruler again, find that 45 degree angle on the ruler and start drawing the lines. Again, I'm going to be quilting from the inside out. Okay, I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine, leave the walking foot on, and sew starting from this line and work my way outward. And I'm going to continue on with the remaining lines, continuing to work my way outward. Okay, so let's finish up this other half. Again, draw the lines one inch apart. And I feel like the quilting on this project in particular looks really nice because the fabric machine quilted to the foam interfacing looks really nice and poofy. Um, and if you've never done any machine quilting, this is a really easy straight line design to try out if you've never done any machine quilting before, and especially on a smaller project. It goes by relatively quickly compared to a quilt. Okay, so I'm going to finish quilting this remaining half, and then I'll come back and show you what the finished piece looks like and then how to trim it down to size. Okay, so here's the completed piece. You'll repeat the same process to complete a second exterior fabric attached to foam interfacing and also for the side panel. So again, make sure you cut everything about one inch larger on all sides before you quilt it to account for the machine quilting shrinkage. And then after you've got all of the pieces quilted, I'm going to use the pieces of lining fabric that I cut from the main panel to use as a template to cut out my pieces to size. So you can either draw around your fabric piece or if you're more comfortable you can use that paper pattern piece or you can just straight up cut it. So I'm just going to cut mine out just so it goes by a little quicker. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece over to the sewing machine, the quilted piece, 
And I'm gonna stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around just to seal the edges because some of these edges aren't tacked down really tightly. And even if you did not machine quilt your pieces, this is the method that you'll use to attach the fabric to the foam interfacing if you're using a sew-in foam and if you're using a fusible foam, just go ahead and fuse it in place. So I'm gonna take this over to the machine and machine baste it using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I switched out to re my regular sewing machine foot so you won't need the walking foot anymore for now. And I also lengthened my stitch length to four millimeters just because this is a basting stitch and it, it goes by a little bit quicker if you do that. Okay, so I cut both of my exterior main panels down to size, and I also cut down to size the exterior side panel. So that should be cut according to the measurements in your cutting instructions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration on how to quilt your fabric to the interfacing when using it to make a bag. Danny alerted me that there were a few questions coming through the feed while that video was playing, so I, wanted, I wrote them down and I wanted to answer them. Um, one of the questions was, is a walking foot necessary? for quilting your fabric to the interfacing. Um, you can do it with your regular foot. However, I find it easier to use a walking foot for quilting the fabric to the interfacing because it's easier to get even looking stitches. Um, normally on your sewing machine, your feed dog is what helps feed the fabric so that it goes through the machine. When you're using the walking foot, it feeds also from the top because the walking foot is feeding it through the machine as well at the same time that the feed dogs are. Um, another question was, do I need to adjust my presser foot for using the walking foot uh, for the quilting? I usually do take a look at the presser foot pressure while I'm sewing, uh, depending on what, with what fabric that I'm using, because if the presser pressure is, is set too low, sometimes the feed dogs will leave tracks on uh, the underside of the fabric, so I always pay attention to that. Um, another question was um, if fusible foam would be better for something like this when you're machine quilting. I usually use sew-in foam. I like using by any soft and stable. I know everyone has their own personal preferences. I like using the sew-in foam rather than the fusible because sometimes uh, when you're turning a bag right side out through the opening in the lining when you finish the bag, sometimes that fusible foam will leave little ripples or dimples in the finished bag that are um, difficult to iron smooth again and so that's why I like using the sew-in foam and then the fourth question that we noticed come through the feed while that video was playing was uh, what project was shown in that video demonstration in that particular demonstration I was showing uh, the filigree double zip pouches which I've linked to in the description if you're interested in seeing that completed project um, but you can do machine quilting for just about any project um, I, I do personally like the look I just don't use it often because um, Usually I feel like I'm focusing on large scale prints and uh, I feel like the quilting is better shown off in uh, something that's a little bit more uh, monochromatic or has a bit of a solid look, such as in the demonstration when I use that um, solid yellow canvas fabric. Okay, I think, uh, so I have a question for you. Um, have you made a quilted bag before, either a quilted bag or a quilted pouch? Let me know in, in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube. I saw some people were already commenting while the video was playing that they have made quilted bags in the past. Um, I think it would be fun in future to have some sort of uh, quilted bag or pouch challenge. So I'm, I'm gonna keep that in mind for a future challenge sometime this year. Um, I also wanted to ask about, I wanted to get your opinion about another quilt that I'm starting. Before I talk through my fabric choices with you, Danny's gonna put a photograph up on the screen. Um, I chose this Meadowland quilt pattern by Then Came June because I, um, after I read the instructions, I felt like it was a relatively easy and straightforward sew, but I'm kind of hung up on my fabric choices. So um, my initial fabric pull for this particular quilt was a white background with 
these particular fabrics, but once I started getting them all together, I was missing some of them, so I ordered them and half of the fabrics came in the mail yesterday, but when I went to put them all together, I was like, no, that kind of looks, I was going for something a little bit different, I'm not sure what, but this kind of reads to me like Easter, Easter eggs, that kind of thing, um, and spring, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that just kind of wasn't what I was going for with my quilt look, and so, I went in a totally opposite direction and I pulled some other fabrics. I don't have all of them with me, but I decided for my second choice option perhaps to go with an almost black background fabric. So I chose Pepper by uh, Kona Solids and it's like a, uh, not charcoal, -y, it's like a navy-ish black background. And I don't know why, but somehow I wanted to add some metallic uh, fabric. So I pulled this uh, Essex Linen by Robert Kaufman Fabrics. This is the color called Camel. So this is, you can probably see on the your, your screen, it, it is metallic and shiny. And I don't have them all pulled, but shades of blues and greens with the metallic and the charcoal really dark background. So I'm not sure if this is just too crazy to work. Um, I My inspiration for the metallic was uh, this fabric that I purchased today. So this is uh, Cotton and Steel Rifle Paper Company and where it looks gold, that's metallic. So I got this fabric today and, and I was like, why couldn't this kind of color scheme work for my quilt? So the really dark charcoal background with greens, gold, and I'm throwing some blue in there. So I'm not sure if this, like I said, I'm not sure if this is too crazy to work like a gold linen with all these solids. Um, let me know what you think about this or did you like my original pull better? Uh, with the purples and the greens and like the the sea foam, so let me know in the comments. I'm I'm kind of unsure about that, uh, but hopefully, I'll come to some decision. I went with I decided you know maybe it should be a rainbow quilt, but then I'm like no I don't know. I always go with the rainbow quilt, so maybe I just have too many rainbow quilts. I don't know. So, <laughs> um, I, before I forget, because sometimes I do, and Danny reminds me by just popping it on the screen anyway. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, if you enjoy our live shows and my bag making and sewing tutorial videos, if you could go ahead and hit the share button right now and share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you will subscribe so that you can be notified of upcoming live shows and new videos that we post to the YouTube channel. And regardless, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you could at least hit the like button, which is the little picture of the thumbs up, the likes, shares, and subscribes help us out so much. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, so I have a giveaway uh, to announce in just a second after we get to some questions. I wanted to announce last week's giveaway winner, which was Carla Heathoff. So congratulations to Carla. Um, I have another giveaway at the end of the show, but I'm going to answer some questions live right now. So if you have a question for me, either a sewing related question, question about a notion or tool, a bag making related question, go ahead and type your question right now in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube. I'll answer as many questions as I can live and Danny's gonna put some of those up on the screen right now. So again, you wanna make sure you actually type your question in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, not through, uh, for example, Facebook Messenger or things like that. Um, just to make sure that your comment comes up in the feed and Danny can see it so he can put some of them uh, up on the screen. Um, I think people Probably are, quilt yeah, quilt. Danny says people are commenting on the quilt and I realized my mistake as soon as that came out of my mouth, but it was too Very late to turn back. <laughs> um, uh, did Danny start his bag? So we, we did go fabric shopping today to Quilter's Destination, which is uh, in the Chicago suburbs. The city's called Arlington Heights and he chose fabric it's in the other room, but he chose fabric from Andover Fabrics designed by Juicy Juice, and it was like a navy background with some uh, like geometric lines on it. I, I wish I had brought it in here, but it's uh, too far to grab uh, right now, but uh, that was his main fabric. I think he wanted to do Tula Pink, De La Luna, um, the bright green eyeball print for the lining. He might possibly change that, but we have the fabric at least. He printed out the paper pattern pieces the other day, so He's uh, baby steps bit by bit getting started on his park sling backpack. Alicia says, have you ever made a monochromatic quilt? Um, I'm not sure if you mean like completely just one color. I have made, um, the one that comes to mind is a baby quilt that I made for my brother a couple years ago. I used a quilt, a quilt pattern from Blossom Heart Quilts. It was a block of the month with foundation paper piece stars. 
and each of the stars was made using not solids but Alice in Glass monochromatic prints so that means usually just one main color and then um, a design usually in white uh, so like it had some geometric designs but each fabric was just the main color so I'm not sure if that's what you mean by monochromatic or the entire quilt in one color if that was the question then I have not but that sounds like a really interesting idea I could see like you know 20 or 30 different shades of green or what have you in a quilt and I think it would be a lot of work to get get it right so that you could see each portion of the quilt so selecting colors that are not too close together um, but I think that would be a really fun idea as well Shannon says do you heat your uh, fray block red online it's supposed to be warm when used and I've never done that that's a good question I didn't even know um, let's see it's it's handy right here uh, so this is fray block it's a seam sealant I didn't know about heating it but I see that it says you should uh, step one in the directions which clearly I have not read before because I didn't know this um, step one says run tube under hot tap water for three minutes and shake for 30 seconds I don't think I've ever done either of those two things and it seems to always work okay for me so again this is a seam sealant I use fray block most commonly when I'm cutting slits and fabric for either magnetic snaps or uh, purse feet whenever I'm making a hole through the fabric with my seam ripper I follow it up with the seam sealant to kind of reinforce that area since I I just cut slits through it uh, very interesting no I did not know about heating it up um, Armina says basic question how does one get an exact quarter of an inch measurement on a sewing machine the needle can be moved so I'm never sure where to measure from I hope that makes sense so we actually do have there's a few options the one that popped into my mind first when you said your needle can be moved because my ca mine can't my my needle cannot move from side to side it's a straight stitch only machine but um, especially if your needle can be moved that can get confusing we sell these acrylic template seam guides in the shop for a whole assortment of different seam allowances basically you nestle um, the different cutouts in the acrylic template for whatever seam allowance that you need and then the edge of the seam guide tells you where to put it um, some machines have different feet for for instance a quarter of an inch seam allowance there's also uh, various things that you can use um, on my machine my machine bed is not marked for a half inch seam allowance so I use a bit of washi tape or painters tape um, creates the same function but you can tape that down on the bed of your sewing machine for whatever uh, seam allowance that you need there are magnetic seam guides which you just kind of uh, place on your bed of your sewing machine since the bed is metal and the magnetic seam guide will stick to wherever you put it on the bed of your machine you can use that to place uh, for a particular seam allowance um, I've seen what else have I seen uh, silicone seam guides I've seen all sorts of things so there's a lot of options for helping yourself get set up to sew with the proper seam allowance for the project that you're working on Linda says do you have any dark turquoise cork in your shop uh, so we have a color that's called teal we actually just got a brand new color um, the official name is actually turquoise and it's kind of uh, it's darker than the ocean blue cork that we sell in the shop already but I feel like it's more proper of a turquoise color uh, it's darker than than this this is quilting cotton obviously but it's darker than this color we'll get that listed in the shop tomorrow so I, I ordered a uh, a large amount of it because I, I really fall in love with that color blue is one of my favorite colors turquoise especially um, and we'll have that in the what's new section of the shop tomorrow morning Tracy says is there a cost for the book club I know I'm a little late but I still want in so it's completely free um, I apologize I don't have a link up in the description for tonight's show but if you go to sosweetness.com backslash blog a few of the posts down you'll find the blog post for book club it's completely free the schedule is in the blog post so we'll be discussing the first book in the club on March 12th which is the Tuesday show every discussion will be on uh, a Tuesday show um, so uh, you can either purchase the book it's the first book is the sewing machine by Natalie Fergie you can either purchase it take it out from your local library uh, there's ebooks available there's audible books uh, there's audible book rentals so there's a whole assortment of different ways that you can get a hold of the book um, but again the actual uh, participation in the club is free it's a six month book club and each of the six months in the club will also be debuting a brand new sewing pattern to go along with the book club discussion and also a free video so new free video new free project um, the projects are all completely new they're all completely free so really excited uh, to get started with the discussion of the book club next month 
Linda says, when adding a divider pocket without a panel, can you just split the bottom in half with an added seam allowance and have the divider pocket be attached that way in the liner? So I guess it depends on if uh, which direction you want the divider to go, if you want it to go from uh, the side of the bag to the other side, which would be in the seam, or if you wanted it to go, uh, I guess, width-wise from the middle of the bag to the back of the bag, which it sounds like that's what you want to do since you mentioned splitting in half the seam allowance. Um, if that's what you were thinking, um, that would be doable, uh, but you would just be seaming, I, I guess, the front and the back of the bag um, because you mentioned it didn't have a side panel. So on the bottom of the bag, uh, it would be unattached, uh, but that would be easy enough to do and you just need to decide the width of that divider, how far you want it to go from the front to the back of the bag. Um, Bev says, did you ever use a uh, gray check? Uh, I'm not sure if you meant free, oh, free check. Um, Freycheck is another brand of seam sealants. I have used Freycheck. I actually, for many years, I used Freycheck. It comes in not a tube, but a little plastic bottle with a blue, uh, blue top to it. I don't know if it was bad luck or what, but my Freycheck would always get clogged in the little nozzle. And for whatever reason, it never gets clogged in the fray block. So that's why I think a couple years ago, I decided to start using the fray block because it never got clogged. With the freight check, it always got clogged, and I would always have to use a pin to stick it down, you know, to unclog it, and it was kind of a hassle. So uh, that's why I use the fray block now instead. And it lasts forever. So this tube, I mean, this tube I've had for probably at least a year and a half, and it's it feels pretty much full still. Uh, Savrit says, I know the cooler went out for Minikin season two, but you still have plans to release a car organizer. It's getting pretty messy. I know the feeling because my car is certainly messy. Uh, there's, you know, we have garbage in the side pockets of the door. Uh, the kids have toys, little, you know, toys in the back seat, all sorts of stuff. I do still have plans to do something with a pattern for that. It's on my list for this year. I don't have a, unfortunately, a date for you yet for that, but uh, definitely going to get to the back seat car organizer for a pattern. Debbie says, uh, Sarah, would a lightly quilted square uh, be a good mouse pad? That's a really great idea, Danny. What do you think? Since you're Danny currently, uh, well, previous heavier material. heavier material. Danny's suggesting a heavier material for a mouse pad. Hmm. I wonder what, wonder what would be heavy enough. Let me think about that. That might be a, a cute little project, uh, a quilted mouse pad. Linda says, when are we going to see the So Sweetness recipe book? Um, unfortunately, we need a little bit of extra time for that. Um, Robin, who was putting the book together, had a little bit of a setback, and so. Uh, we're working behind the scenes to get that together for you. Uh, we'll let you know on the live shows and on social media um, as soon as we have that recipe book available. And that'll be free. Uh, we'll be distributing it. We'll have it listed on the website, and that'll be a free ebook. Roxanne says, for the Turnpike Wallet, is there another interfacing other than the Peltex? I would like something a little more flexible. So that makes perfect sense. Um, an option, um, a different option than Pel on Peltex is Decoville Heavy. So it's not readily available, at least in the United States. I've ordered it before online from gotinterfacing.com. And it's not exactly the same as Peltex, but it, it serves a similar purpose. So it's much thinner. I find it a bit more flexible. Uh, the Peltex, while it bends, it's not exactly flexible if you say, um, this is a bad example. <laughs> if you say like have it in a U shape, like I find that the Decoville Heavy rolls a bit more under the fingers and is more flexible. And again, that's the Decoville Heavy, not the Decoville Light. Decoville Heavy and Peltex are very similar, but uh, they're different. I feel like they fuse different. They're different, different thicknesses, but I would feel perfectly comfortable substituting Decoville Heavy for Peltex just about any, any day of the week. <laughs> All right, Danny's calling it on the question, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live, uh, but I always answer questions on the Tuesday show, which is Ask Sarah. It's at the same time as the Sunday show, 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you've not yet joined us for the Tuesday show, Ask Sarah, I hope you'll join us this Tuesday. I have a great giveaway for you today. I checked in with my friend Vanessa from the Crafty Gemini. I know many of you are also Crafty Gemini fans, but I asked Vanessa if she would very kindly um, donate a an item for the social social Sunday giveaway tonight. So Vanessa has offered up uh, to one lucky randomly drawn winner. I'll be drawing the winner at the end of the day this Saturday. And the prize is Vanessa has a new course teaching you how to make a bomber jacket. So I got this course myself. 
I'm busy choosing my fabric, so um, included in the giveaway is the pattern to make the bomber jacket. Oh, before we go more into that, I have a photograph to put on the screen. So this is Vanessa and her daughter wearing the various jackets, bomber jackets that she's made. So they all look wonderful. I love the quilted sleeves. I love the bright colors. They just look really stylish and hopefully spring will be coming soon to Chicago and I can wear finish the bomber jacket in time. But um, included in the giveaway is this uh, J. Lee pattern for the bomber jacket. It includes, it, it includes 27 sizes, so for girls and for women. I have to admit, when I first got the pattern in the mail, I looked on the back of the pattern to you know see uh, what, what size I needed to cut and uh, how unfortunate that my bust size falls underneath the, not the woman size chart, but the girl size chart. So I was like a little, a little sad face at that, but it's okay, you know, the jacket's still gonna turn out great. Um, Vanessa also sent a fabric kit with thread, um, zipper, fabric, knit fabric, all you need to make a bomber jacket, including that quilted fabric that I was admiring just a second ago, and also a copy of Vanessa's video course. So she goes into great lengths to make sure that everyone understands how to work with the pattern, how to choose a size, how to make adjustments, how to complete the project. So it's a very extensive video course. So included is the pattern, the fabric kit, and the video course. If you're interested in finding out more about Vanessa's course, uh, the link is in the description. And um, I hope you'll, if you're not already following her on YouTube, you should. Her YouTube channel is called Crafty Gemini, and it's magnificent. She's been doing this for very many years, so she's a pro at it, definitely knows what she's doing, and has a variety of different sewing projects um, and other projects. She shares about her farm life on her YouTube channel as well, so it's a great channel to follow. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is to answer this question in the comments, either on YouTube or Facebook. And the question is, what is your favorite garment you have made or would you like to make if you've not made a garment before? So my favorite garment in my closet, I don't wear it very often, but I made a Patterns by Gertie halter dress. It had um, uh, gathered elastic in the back. It had a, a princess seam. It had a sweetheart neckline. It was just a great dress. In fact, I made it, uh, I think the same dress three times, but that's the most fa favorite pattern that I've ever made. So let me know your answer in the comments. I'll announce the winner next Sunday on Social Sunday. So thank you again so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.